Welcome to the channel. This is Go Greddy and welcome to the 2020 end of preseason final race wrap up and A plus driver rating goal update. But before I get to the results of my last two races and my current driver rating standing, I ask that if you could be so kind as to hit the like and or subscribe as it would help me tremendously in growing the channel. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to it. All right, for the quick channel update, at the beginning of the 2020 season, the very beginning of 2020, actually, the beginning of the year, uh, when I set my goal for A+, I was at 41,239 DR. Now, for me, uh, that was an accomplishment in itself. Uh, I was in the A rating. I had attained superstar or S status, and I was firmly above the B driver rating category. So uh, at that time, A-plus for me was and is a difficult hill to climb. And uh, as I've mentioned before, I, I'm, I'm not an alien. So I've had to log quite a few hours on my trusty old T-150 to get to this point. And to be a, quite honest, I, I'm pretty proud of how far I've come. Uh, right now, I'm knocking on the door of A-plus as I currently sit at 47,098 DR points. And uh, to get here, it has been quite a roller coaster ride. But, um, you know, right now at the end of the preseason, only 3,000 DR points away from that A-plus goal I set for myself. So I can usually gauge how well I'll do in a race in my practice lobbies. Uh, with A-plus drivers in my lobby, I actually led for seven laps. So when this race started, I was fairly confident I could place the top 10 and raise the DR even, even further. Um... And then uh, at race time, as if any of you watched the live stream, uh, I had a bad qualifying start in P11, then had some misfortune and dropped all the way to P17. So after that race, I dropped 1,200 DR points, and that did not sit well with me. So I went on to race number two. Again, a lobby that I should do very well in, but again, as you will see, I had a poor qualifying which was extremely frustrating because I was nailing 144s in, in practice, and then I qualify here, as you see, in the 145s. So in race two, I do it again. Qualify poorly in P11, and Catalonia is not the easiest to pass folks at. All right, so as we start the race, I have my work cut out for me. And as I'm starting the race, I am thinking to myself, I absolutely do not want to get stuck behind anyone on racing hard tires. So if you even looked slow, I was going to try and pass you as quickly as humanly possible. So heading into corner one, hoping for no mayhem, uh, I break nice and early, ease off on it, try and get a good corner. As you can see, Bleak goes in a little bit hot there. Uh, maybe the person in front was going a little bit slow, but he loses control, gets spun out. I pick up a position, move into P10 immediately on corner one. So uh, Bleak's pain is my gain in this race as I move the inside here of Blood Wolf Boogie. Looking for an inside pass. He's looking slow. He breaks early. I stick it down to the inside, jump in here behind Shellshock105, who picked up that one second, I believe, in the incident with Bleak. So I know now, right here, that I'm going to pick up yet another position, regardless of what happens. So he gets into me a little bit. I, you know, not a big deal. I'm not trying to really pass him here. I'm just trying to stay in the line, stay as close as I can. So when he takes his penalty, I can jump into the slipstream of seventh place. Come around this right hander. I'm trying to get a really nice exit so I can get a good run out of here. Take it just a little bit slower than I wanted to. But that's all right. I'm still in the slipstream of that Lexus in front of me. Get on the brakes a little bit late because I know that with, the, with the domino effect, they're all going to be breaking early. The Mercedes gets in the back of me, spins my rear end around a little bit. Uh, nothing too bad. That is trust no one here. Have driven with him before in the past. Usually a pretty clean driver, so I wasn't worried about him doing that again. Uh, as he was probably experiencing a little bit of that domino effect as well as everyone kind of piles up in those tight corners. Coming through this chicane, this is where uh, I had some bad fortune in the prior race where I was knocked all the way back from P9 to P17. No such bad luck this time, though. Get through there clean. Now i got to put the head down. Got to chase down P7 here on lap two to try and make up as many positions as I can. 157.565 opening lap. Not terrible considering the traffic we were dealing with. 
So I was pretty happy about that. And I can see P2. He's right up there. Uh, you know, we're still only five seconds off P1, who is actually starting to run away a little bit with the race already. It looks like he's already broken slipstream up there or is very close to it. But all I need to do is just stay with this pack right here in front of me, and I should be okay as CR88X slams it down the inside of the purple VW up front. So looking good they're looking racy up there that means i'm going to be able to catch them but i still want them to stay in the slipstream of the people in front of them so they can help me move forward as we come through lap two into this left hander followed by a right hander again i'm just trying to get good clean solid exits get on that lexus's tail i know it's going to have me on speed on the straight but that's okay i think i'll be able to either handle him on the exit out of the uh, last corner or possibly into turn one or turn two, three combo, something like that. Maybe get down the inside of him. He jumps down the inside of the VW. I'm like, this is my chance. VW cuts me off there, gets back with the undercut on Ninja Bar, puts it down the inside. I think, okay, well, I'm going to get the undercut here and slams the door <laughs> on me on the corner. I get to the back end of him. Mercedes gets in the back of me a little bit. Ah, oh, I thought I had a move right there, but man, the doors were shut all around the vw did a good job defending that corner from the lexus and the lexus defending me after he got the door slammed on him so heading into lap three i'm still in pa uh ran a 147 there i'd like to be in a, a 146 territory right here at least really a one a high 145 would be ideal but uh no such luck Get on the brakes there just past the uh, double cones. I like to put the cones on for this track because there are a few areas where it just really isn't a very good brake marker to use. So it's just nice to have those little eye references there, a little eye candy for the brake pedal uh, along the track. As Ninja Bar gets out a little wide here, I'm trying to decide who I want to follow. But I'm going to stay to the inside because I want to get hung out on the outside. So good choice by Greddy there as I come down the inside. I got the Lexus on the outside, but man, he powers out of that corner nicely. And I'm not able to make the move. So here I'm going to try it along and get the cut back. And I will not be able to make it stick there either. So I'm just... Me and the Lexus both just trying to find a way around this VW. And the longer I stay behind him, I'm coming to realize he is on hard tires. And it's really starting to frustrate me because he's starting to lose the slipstream of the guy in front of him. And I really need him to keep the slipstream of Andre Sav, who's up there, so that uh, I can stay close to that front of the pack. So heading down again towards the tight left-hander here. I get on the brakes late. At, the Lexus has to leave me a little bit of room on the inside. I squeeze him outside. He gets back into me a little bit trying to head down to that apex, but I don't let him have it. I shut the door on him, and now I'm hunting the VW, and the Lexus is behind me. Now, that, that Lexus was fighting that VW pretty hard, so I'm wondering if uh, his tires aren't suffering pretty badly from that. I'm, I'm, that's what I was kind of planning on at this point in the race. So I'm really, I'm really focusing ahead on that VW. So let's fast forward just a little bit to where I get on that rear end of that VW. All right, a little further down the road here in lap four into this left-hander where it's a tire eater, if you ask me. He tries to hold it in tight there and really kind of keeps me from getting a good good exit out of there and, and letting the car float through there so again get, trying to get on his rear bumper here getting good exits now i got on the gas a little too early there got greedy it cost me so again trying to hug this apex get a good exit make a run on him on the straight trying to tell get getting that toe have him pull me in as we head down here towards the you know almost hairpin curve and as we do so andre sav and cr80x get into each other rip cr88x Andre Sav lets off on the gas. I think he's thinking about letting him take that position back. Wasn't sure if that was the case or if uh, he was just recovering maybe a little bit from uh, the rear end, getting a little happy on him there. Wasn't sure, but uh, so that gave me two positions up to P5. Looking really good right now here on lap four because P3 and P2 are right there. And if I could get this VW out of my way, I could probably have been sitting on the tail end of Mop Racer up there in P3 by now. But... Now the hard tires are starting to show, or rather starting to shine, uh, with the little wear that they have at this point. And my softs are really getting, you know, pretty well worn. As you can see down there in the lower left-hand corner, I've got a little order over a quarter wear on each of the tires. Of course, that left front and the left rear are suffering mightily as we go around through this long, sweeping right-hander. And, you know, on fresh tires, I'd be pulling on them really hard through there, but... 
with the worn softs, I'm not quite getting that grip that I need, but I'm still getting enough where I can pull them out of the exits, trying to find a place where I can send it on, trying to find a place where I can pass them, but just cannot. Again, I want to just get on it through there, but you know, he's he's you know right there in the way where if I just get on it really hard, I'll get into the side of him, maybe send him off the track. I don't want to do that either. So fast forward here to just before the pit stops, and right here, I, I just I have a brain spasm. For whatever reason, I'm like I'll just follow him into the pits. I'm probably getting better fuel mileage in here because I've been short shifting. Not a big deal. I'll just pass him when we come out of the pits. So I ease off. I'm following him, and he doesn't go in the pits because he's on hards. So I enter late, hit the grass, eat the wall, and then get him back. Uh, poor Andre Savs coming in behind me hits me, hits the wall himself, and he's going to collect a four second penalty for that so apologies andre uh not my intention at all i just had a total brain spasm as i was uh, i was following that vw and he was i don't know what i was thinking as you can see andre here with the four second penalty for me murdering him in pit lane i mean oh god does gt sport ever need to update their penalty system i mean if, if this is quote unquote artificial intelligence it's it's not very smart so um I, not much I can do here. It's not like I can give him the position back. I, it's, it, I mean, he's got the position, but he's got a four-second penalty. And uh, so I felt pretty bad about that, uh, uh, it, this part in the race. So anyway, head back down. I've got to figure out a way to claw my way back up to the front as I lost every single position that I gained. So Andre Sav serves his penalty for me murdering him in pit lane. And he drops a few positions back as I head down through corner one. So we'll fast forward here. Lap seven, I caught up to P8 in a VIN code number here. Uh, I'm not really sure what the heck else to call that. Maybe Wi-Fi password too. I don't know. Try to get a good exit. Coming out of the last corner, make a run on him down the straight. He was running hard tires. He was on what we would find out later was the one-stop strategy. So... Sent it down the inside of him here. Uh, I could tell he was on hard tires just the way he was, just the car was handling. And uh, just out him there in the corner one. And then Martel gets in the back of me just a tiny bit, but it was enough to slow him down. And then he gets uh, into a little bump there, then code, and uh, drops a couple positions back behind me. So tough break there for Martel. So fast forward to lap 10, you see Seabass coming out of the pit lane there. Now you can look down the left corner and see I am on some pretty worn soft tires i'm on lap 10 and at this is typically the end of the road for me usually i come in for the pip stop but i'm gonna try and push it to six laps here um trying to just get a little more out of these soft tires but regardless i know that sea bass is definitely faster than me so i'm not going to be doing anything silly here to hold him up i found the best place to let people buy is actually right here because you can just run a little wide and just kind of come off the gas just enough. Let them take that inside line. Then you can get on it right here and just stay next to them. And then just get off a little early right here. And man, they just zoom on through on the inside. We jump right back in their slipstream. It's like you didn't miss a beat. So uh, give them a little bump draft there to, to give them a little push forward. Let them know, hey, go on, brother. Use those fresh tires. Suck me up to the front. I give him a couple little flashes of the headlights here to let him know. Just stay on the line. And he jumps out of the way to the left and takes the line tight. I have no idea why. So if, if you're in front of me and I just give you a couple flashes of the headlight, it means take the racing line. So anyway, I pit at the end of lap seven. I've got 16% fuel left. A couple laps there. So I'm just going to jump on the hards here for one lap. Come out the pits. I come out in position 11. Or was it eight? Oh, oh, eight. And um, jump in here behind uh, Virtual Carlos and CR88X. Now, Virtual Carlos does me a favor here on lap 12 and just uh, decides to run a little wide there and <laughs> give me a position. So many thanks, Carlos. Come back immediately, pit there at the end of lap 12. The boys from the Porsche team slamming on some fresh tires. Now, you can tell that this is the factory Porsche pit crew as. They get me out of the pits, lickety split. So I'm back with enough fuel to get to the end of the race. I, you know, I didn't overfill there. I'm, I'm just just enough for five laps and uh, hop in. I, I'm out of the pits behind CR88X. And again, our our friend with the VIN code, and we know what he's doing. That's right, he's on the one stopper. So CR88X looking for a way around him. 
and he's gonna he's gonna do like I do is go to the outside here but then he tries to send it around the outside just gets on the corner front side of, of the Mazda there but then the Mazda slams the door closed on me and actually causes me to spin out a little bit so slams the door on both of us there with his hard tires mr. hard tire driver and fin code guy thanks a lot so it's just a matter of time before I put it by him, as you can see, he's getting a little loose here. I know that I'm going to be able to get the better exit here, just like I did on lap eight. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just setting it up here, eating some big sausage right there, straddling that sausage like a man. I get on the gas, get a little bit squirrely, but I just keep it to the floor. As I come down the straight, getting the suck of that Mazda. I'm going to go down the inside right here and I'm out break him into corner one. Because that's how I do it. Look at this. What a move by the Gretty. Oh, on the brakes hard. That's right. That's how you make the pass stick. <laughs> so, move into P7 on lap 15. And that is where I will stay as I'm unable to chase down the other Porsche there in front of me in P6. I will cross the line in 7th place, which was pretty good. I actually gained a good bit of my my DR back here, about seven 800 of the points that I needed. But uh, that wasn't enough because I didn't want to lose even 500 and end the season in such a manner. So I did not listen to the wise advice of, of Turpy Erfy and uh, stay the heck away from race three during the Superstar race because apparently you get thrown into a higher lobby. And he warned me of that. And I was like, nah, nah, I'll just go ahead and race it. And um, so let's take a look at that lobby right now. All right, yeah, seriously. I mean, Marzan, Lester, Zenit, Cooper, Def Sun, Steiger. Yeah, those were the those were the guys in my lobby. <laughs> so I qualify in P11. What? No, no, not really. <laughs> it ended up being P14. Yep, so I started in P14, and after 17 laps, I finished in P14. <laughs> That's right. But, to my credit, I, I did actually place in front of a few A-plus drivers, so I was pumped about that. And it did cost me 80 or so DR to be able to do so. Um, so, overall, it was a fairly costly night at Catalonia. I had a one top 10 finish, and I lost around 700 DR points, which is where it put me at the end of the season, as you saw earlier, at 47,098 points. About 2,902 away from the goal of a plus that i just can't seem to reach but i will continue my path to finish that goal so anyway so anyway i am looking forward to the official 2020 season i'm really looking forward to the changes that gt sport is proposing especially the penalty system and to hopefully finally push my way across the finish line for that a plus rating and of course i'd love to have you jump in the passenger seat and come along for the ride as it will certainly have its ups and downs and should be a fun one. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will join me for more of them in the future. For myself, go Gretty. Y'all have a great evening. DJ Clean, you know what to do.